I'd like to welcome our viewers and listeners to the Mi Camino series. Our guests today are married couple Blanca Melendres and Mark Patterson, who actually were brought together through a Spanish literature class here at UC San Diego. We'll get to that part of their journey a bit later, but for now, um, welcome Mark and Blanca. How about if you share with our listeners why you chose UC San Diego and what was your major and what attracted you to your major? Thank you, Frank, for the invitation. Uh, my major was political science and Spanish literature. And I chose UC San Diego because that was a dream that my family and I had when we immigrated here to, to the U.S. And you? I chose UC San Diego because I pretty much grew up on the campus. My mom um, was a uh, immigrant as well, and she uh, was one of the first Latinas to go to UCSD and attend Ravel College. She started in 1966 and, uh, and then had a career there that spanned over 30 years. And so I went to the campus often and I saw it as a place of, of learning, of excellence, and, uh, and, and a dream as well to one day attend uh, our beautiful campus. And do you, you all remember your first quarter or your first year at UC San Diego? What was that like? Yeah, Frank, so for me, my first quarter was, was very challenging. I transferred from a community college after three attempts to apply to UCSD and finally being admitted through, um, through the TAC program and affirmative action. So when I attended UCSD my first quarter, I didn't really speak English well. Um, so it was quite challenging. I felt um, very different and, and was trying to find ways to connect with the community on campus and connect with other Latinos as well. So the first, the first semester, oh, the first quarter was, was challenging, but um, I took my first political science class and I passed. And that just really gave me a lot of hope and uh, helped me believe in myself. And, and from that point, moving forward, you know, I, I was able to graduate. And I'm also a transfer student. Uh, I was at Southwestern College before attending UCSD. And I remember uh, very much my first year on campus because I began taking Spanish literature classes. And it was amazing to be at such a prestigious university and at the same time take a course that is so close to home. Um, it was one of the wonderful experiences being able to come home uh, with my parents and speak Spanish and tell them about what I'm learning, to debate about the literature topics. Uh, we would re read my essays and review and discuss. And it was just an amazing experience that here I was on this, my dream campus and I was able to engage with my family about Spanish literature. That was really special. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's talk a little bit about um, your parents. I, I too am a first generation student and I feel very often uh, our parents play a significant role in our decision to go to college. So maybe each of you could share a little bit about what role your parents played in your college going decision making and if you remember any consejos or dichos that they might have shared with you that inspired you yes i i think i can go um my i i was born and raised in, in central mexico in a rural town um a lot of the community from from mexico from that town immigrates and works um, as farmers here in the u.s so my dad always wanted to go to school and he never had the opportunity. So when we were born, my brother and I, he said, we want a different life, a different life for you, for your brother. So from now on, you're going to dedicate yourself um, to studying. And my family and I joke because, you know, I don't cook. And I always blame it on my dad because he wouldn't let me get into the kitchen because, you know, my purpose in life was to have a career and a better future for myself and, and my future generations. So I, I am very grateful to my parents um, that uh, without an education, they had a dream for a better life. And that meant, you know, having a career, having a degree and um, immigrating from central Mexico to northern Mexico and then to, to San Diego. 
and being able to to go to college and to have uh, a degree. And I remember, you know, um, my dad would stay up at night every single night with me so that I could feel that support because that was the only way he could support me. He wasn't able to help me with the academics, with the writing, with the reading, with understanding English, but he was able to sit with me in the kitchen or in the living room and stay up all night while he was reading and I was doing my homework to have that support so that I could feel that I could do this and I, I could graduate and, and it, everything was going to work out for us. Wow, that's that's great. Mark? And so, and so for me, you know, my mom having been a college graduate, a UCSD graduate, it was uh, it was expected that uh, that after finishing high school that I would attend college, any college. And my stepdad, uh, also a college graduate from La UNAM in Mexico City, also uh, had that expectation of me going on to college, even though he he was not familiar with the process. Uh, it was clear. Every, you, when I would get my grades, and if I didn't make grades, it was it was known to me that I was not meeting expectations, and I needed to step it up. And either I was going to work uh, or go to college, but I was not going to be a flojo and uh, live at home and do nothing. I mean, if I didn't want to go to college, you're going to work full time and you're going to pay your way. But if you go to college, we'll 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 figure out a way to to help you out. And uh, and so that was. That was important, right? To have that support, to have that experience, even though my stepdad uh, was not familiar with the system, just having that 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 desire and that uh, that support was was very meaningful for me. Excellent. And I'm curious, um, how did you? We know that from research that what often leads to success for students is they find community, they find their niche within the university. Uh, Blanca talked a little bit about having, you know, a challenge that first quarter. I'm wondering if either of you found your niche or community, and if you did, what what was that? Yeah, for me, it was um, trying to identify my community and, and, and learning that there were people, uh, Latinos like myself, at UCSD. So I took a, a Spanish literature class, and that's when I connected. And I found community in the literature department um, through my professors and through my classmates and friends. Um, and that network was what really opened uh, the doors for me because that's how I learned about all these different resources within UCSD. I also was a student worker at the Center for U.S. Mexican Studies and everybody, the director, the staff, the plateros, they all really um, supported me um, emotionally uh, and also with academics, they they guided me, they helped edit my reports, and they were always cheering for me because they knew, you know, English was not my first language, and they knew that I was a transfer student and that I needed a lot of support and resources. So Center for U.S. Mexican Studies and the Literature Department were are my allies and my supporters throughout my college. And and I definitely found community when um, when I found my wife, <laughs> right? And and those Spanish, but it was those Spanish literature classes. I I, I felt amazing. I, I you know just you know just thinking about reminiscing and and, and being that back there in, in in the classrooms and having those conversations about Marxism and literature and and español todo en español was amazing. I felt. I felt like this is for me. I, 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 you know, it's hard to explain how amazing I felt being at UCSD, engaging in Spanish, uh, critical, critical theory, critical literary theory, totalmente en español, challenging myself, you know, because at home, we spoke Spanish at home, uh, but being bilingual is not the same as being biliterate. And it's not the same as being able to engage in an intellectual conversation at the university level in Espanol. It was, it was amazing. And I would have, we, Black and I would have debates and, you know, I would critique her, her, her presentations and she actually hated that, right? Yes. <laughs> but, but I did it with love. I, you know, I did it with love because, you know, see, I was so, obviously she's, my wife is gorgeous and, and, and I just love seeing her, but you know, having that other level of, of connection that here we were to, to aspiring academics, right? Um, 
passionate about what we were doing and, and falling in love. That was amazing. So you met in literature, Spanish yes. literature. And yeah. do you remember that first day, Mark, that you saw her? Like, tell us a little bit about that story. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so it was, um, you know, it was one, the, the, the first literature class that we really started to, to, to see each other was a small um, uh, upper division seminar-like class. And it was about Raymond Williams, who's this Marxist writer about literary theory. And we were studying contrahegemonia, counterhegemony, you know, these, these really high level concepts. And, uh, and, and it was a small setting, right? There was just this large conference table and there were maybe 15 students tops. And so that was where I could like see Blanca across the way and, and she, could, she could see me. And I remember one time after class, because we would go to that class and then we would go to with Max, pa there was Jorge Mariscal. I got to give a shout out to Jorge Mariscal if he's still a professor at UCSD. I think he is. Um, you know, he was the professor at the time. And then we would go to another class with Max Parra. And, uh, and so in that wait, we're waiting for the next class and Blanca comes up and, and says, uh, Hey, so it sounds like you you kind of understand this contrahegemonia concept. Uh, what you know? What, help me understand what, what what's what's the deal? And we started talking about it, and I suggested, you know what? Why don't you give me your phone number, and and we can then have a follow up conversation instead of just waiting in the hallway for our next class. And that was it. She was willing to give me her phone number. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great it was a it was a great move on my part. <laughs> And, uh, and she was willing to meet with me, which was, I, I found amazing. I'm, you know, and, and that's how our relationship really began, uh, talking about contrahegemonia y marxismo en literatura. Uh, and I think, you know, for, for those students that are considering, you know, obviously relationships are an important part uh, of being UC, at being a college student, you know, having someone that you can engage with in a common interest is so, is so critical because we just helped each other uh, navigate the next couple of years. Uh, we also both pursued master's degrees at UC, at UC San Diego. And, uh, and we ended up being TAs in, in the Spanish literature department. I, I did linguistics and um, so, yeah, I think I answered your question, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I always love hearing that story. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. And I was just gonna add that, you know, my, my high school friends and my college friends knew Mark, and I never met him. I never met him until maybe six, seven years later on campus. So that that's a funny story too. Yeah, some might say it was uh, destiny. It was destiny, yes. yes. <laughs> and we'll be married 20 years uh, in November this year, Frank. Wow, congratulations. Most students um, live on campus, but you two are commuter students. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so I actually lived in Tijuana and I would get up at three, four in the morning uh, and then cross the border, drive all the way to La Jolla and come back around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. I did that for many, many years, uh, three years of undergraduate and almost three years of master's and um, until I married Mark and and then I started living here on, on this side in San Diego. So that was my, my journey. Yeah. And, and I also, uh, for, there, there was a time when I lived in Tijuana when my mom commuted to UC San Diego on a daily basis. Uh, for, you know, at some point, we, we ended up moving to Chula Vista, which is pretty, pretty close to the border. It's only five minutes away. And my mom would commute on a regular basis. And, uh, and so when it was my turn to go to college, there were occasions where we would drive together. And that was amazing. That was very special to have the opportunity to commute with my mom. Uh, you know, those 40, that 40 minute drive and that long drive home uh, you, from La Jolla to Chula Vista, the traffic is no joke. But, you know, having some time with my mom was also very special and unique for my experience. That's great. Hey, you know, you both got your bachelor's and your master's degree. And what are you each doing now professionally in your careers? So I love my job. 
I work for UC San Diego. Uh, I am the executive director of the Center for Community Health, which is a very unique um, unit of the university because we advocate for social justice and communities of color when it comes around issues related to hunger and chronic disease prevention. So I'm, I'm the executive director. I've been at the center for 20 years and I love my job. It's about <coughs> Uh, providing opportunities for communities of color to live healthier lives. So we opened the first farmer's market that accepted food stamps in City Heights to most recently operating a dollar for dollar match in the pur purchase of fruits and vegetables throughout Southern California to increase food security among our food stamp participants. So that's that's what I do, working with refugees and immigrants and making sure that they have the means to to eat healthy food and to have access to healthcare and to just live healthier lives and advocating for equity, racial equity. And I'm, I'm currently an assistant principal at Montgomery High School in the Sweetwater District. Uh, after I graduated from UCSD, I, I decided that I was going to be a teacher, a bilingual teacher. And I pursued my, my B-clad credential so that I could teach uh, Espanol, eh, clases de, de ciencias sociales en español, uh, social science classes in Spanish. And I started my career teaching at Castle Park High School, which was actually the, my, the high school that my mom graduated from, my brother graduated from. And, uh, and I it was a wonderful experience. And after the years, I decided that I wanted to get into administration and I pursued my, my admin credential. And for the last six years, I've been an assistant principal. And I just have one more question for each of you. Um, what advice do you have for our young scholars who are listening to this recording? Yeah, thank you, Frank, for that question. Uh, the advice is probably based on my lived experience. I think what really changed um, my journey was asking for help. Many times uh, when we feel alone, uh, we don't feel comfortable asking for help, and I think that's one of the things that really helped me. Um, reaching out to friends, to staff, to professors, and just asking for support and asking for help. And of course, um, you know, you have a dream and all we need is that opportunity. And once we're given that opportunity, we work very hard, you know? So Latinos work hard, we're dedicated, and you know, si se puede. <laughs> Definitivamente si se puede. So just being very proud of your heritage of your culture, uh, be respectful of other cultures and communities, and um, ask for help so that you can be successful academically. And, and my, my advice would be to follow your passion. When I, when I went to UCSD, I had to decide what was I going to, to study. I had completed all my general ed classes, and I went back to the most fulfilling experience that I had in high school, which was in my AP Spanish Lit class. Although I wasn't successful academically, I loved the class. And I went back to that. And my life today is a continuation of that, um, of that passion of biliteracy, of giving back to the community. So don't worry so much about the job that you're going to have after college. Right now, worry about focusing on what makes you happy. Think about the experiences that you had in your childhood or in high school or right now. And what about those relate to a college experience? And in my case, it was, it was Spanish, el estudiar español. And I'm sure that there are you know, a, a lot of students that have really wonderful and memorable experiences in STEM topics. Maybe they had a great experience in a robotics club uh, or whatever the case may be. Search deep and remember what made you happy and pursue that when you're in college. Blanca, Mark, thank you for sharing your journey and advice with our young scholars today. I'm really happy that you could join us. Thank you so much, Frank. I really enjoyed this experience. You know, this is the first time that Blanca and I have been interviewed like this. Yes, and, thank you so much for the opportunity. And it's an opportunity for us to give back. And hopefully, yes. um, you know, somebody will watch this video yeah. and, and, and have a positive outcome as a result. Yes.
And I just want to say, you know, UC San Diego for both of us um, changed our lives. Yeah. So thank you for that.